What's up, Browns fans? Nathan Zagura along with Andrew Gribble. We are almost there. The road to the draft. We are reaching the end of this road. It's the road to the draft, of course, presented by PNG and Meyer and Gribbs. Here we are approaching the draft. It's time now to get into, we've gone through the main positions that we think we're talking about, you know, receivers, the edge linebackers, of course, cornerbacks. And now we're going to go ahead and put a little plan into action. Try to project what the Browns will do on Thursday night and Friday night. No trades, unless you want to say, Hey, I want to move up and get somebody. I will, I will certainly allow that, but let's take a look at what we think the Browns could do here. And I'll start with you pick 26. You are on the clock. What card are you turning in, Gribbs? You know, I'm I'm willing it into existence because I, as our guy Dane Brugler told us on BPA, this is a best case scenario, and I, I think getting Greg Newsom the second out of Northwestern might not happen. I, I think 26 is his floor, but I'm getting him to the floor at number 26 of the Browns. I just think this is such a a, a polished corner that can compete right away to help you out. Address is probably the biggest need on the defense and gives you this young core of corners that you can really build around a smart player, efficient. I'm not worried about the interceptions, the lack of interceptions. That is, I would think this would be a steal for the Browns to get Greg Newsom the second at number 26. Well, Gribbs and folks, so you know, we did not discuss who our picks would be ahead of time. I have the exact same pick, Greg Newsom, and I would run to the podium. In fact, I just did a podcast uh, earlier this week when some I was picking as a representative of the Browns, and they sent me the board that was left, and Newsom's name was on there, and I said, I, I don't need to even look anymore. That's what I'm doing. Let's just for a second. So you laid out why you want him. Tremendous corner, great in press, and man, off coverage. Dan Orlovsky did a couple Northwestern games this year and said he reminded him a lot of Richard Sherman. And we know Joe Woods and Richard Sherman were recently together in San Francisco. I, I think he makes a lot of sense. I mean, last year, 15.7 passer rating against. That led the FBS. So very talented. I would love to see it. We both went corner. My question for you is this. What, what would you be thinking if Newsom, if Sertan, if Horn, if Farley are all gone when the Browns are on the clock at 26? Because I don't think any of us necessarily want that scenario, but it is, I think, a realistic scenario. Yeah, I don't, but I, I, I would be all right with Asante Samuel as well. I, I like the pedigree. I like that he can potentially be your long-term option in the slot. I know you brought in Troy Hill this year, but you know, uh, I think you can have a future player in this that could play in the slot and also can help you outside. I mean, this is a deep corner class, and, and Asante Samuel might slip to the second round just because there's so many guys there. I would be okay with that. I would also be okay with a potential move back, uh, potentially acquire some some more assets. Uh, get you in that position. Also, again, we're almost like back to the futuring it. I would be okay with a move up to get your corner that you want in this draft because I think these guys are that good. And I think that the the cornerback position right now for the Browns, both in the future and 2021, you might be one player away from being feeling really good uh, about that group. I, I think to me, you've addressed the edge rusher situation in free agency to the point where I like the developmental guys that are in that edge rusher cluster, but I would prefer to address that position maybe in the second round as opposed to using that first round asset. there. Agreed. All right. So you've got Newsom. We both have Greg Newsom. Now we're in the second round, pick 59. Where are you going, Gribbs? I am going to edge rusher, and I think it, it might require parting with potentially both of your fourth round picks to move up to get this done. But I think this is a player that fits what the Browns want to do and can help them out a lot. I'm going with Joe Tryon out of Washington. I don't know if you can wait to 59, but I think you could maybe get him mid second round or say he falls down to you. He didn't play last year, was an opt out player, but I'd like the size, the, 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 the future that he has, his coach said, you know, he's just scratched the surface on what he can do. I think you're looking for traits, skills, and I think this is a player that fits that and can develop behind the scenes with Clowney, uh, McKinley, Miles Garrett, all in the mix for 2021. Yeah, it could be a long-term succession plan there and a guy that, you know, has a lot of, a similar profile to Marcus Davenport coming out and Davenport ended up going early in the first round. The Saints traded up to get him. So great body and athleticism. I actually have, so I told you I had two scenarios. One of my scenarios is Newsom Joe Tryon. So we are certainly thinking the same way there. So I have him as a selection. And then if I were to go receiver in the second round, 
I had Rondale Moore at pick 59 for the Browns. We talked about just what an electric player he was back in 2018. He provides a skill set that we do not have on our roster. He can help out in the return game as well. Uh, can be like Tyler Lockett, inside, outside, stud after the catch. Great character guy, competitive as heck, and somebody that I think would bring a lot to our offense. So I'm looking at corner and then defensive end or receiver. And then my third round would be defensive end or receiver based on what I did before. So you've got Newsom and Tryon. Where are you going here in the third round? So I've got, you got the two picks. So you've got 89 and 91. Do we think they're going to make both of these picks? Odds are when those picks are that close together, it usually doesn't happen. But in this exercise, they are going to make both of those picks. The first selection I have them making is Amari Rogers, the wide receiver out of Clemson. I like his compact size. I like what he can do in the slot. Can help you out a great value in the third round. And again, even if you don't go wide receiver in the third round, you probably got a lot of options in the fourth and fifth round as well. So even if you don't go there that 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 direction, you can get you can get a talented player at that position. And then my pick at number 91 is a bit of a wild card and I'm confident that you're not going to agree with this one because I think we're on a slightly different page of this. I'm going with Alabama linebacker Dylan Moses uh, in the third round. I think this is a sweet spot that the Browns have found with linebackers in the draft. And I think Dylan Moses fits the the, the things you're looking for in terms of athleticism, pot- potential, and, and just, just what you want out of a linebacker, the pedigree at Alabama. This is someone that was recruited, I think committed to LSU when he was in eighth grade. I mean, this is a freakish athlete. I mean, he he has been on everyone's radar from the very beginning. And when you have those expectations that high, you can only maybe fall short of those. And I think he's dealt with injuries uh, and, and just didn't maybe perform at quite the level that might have been expected out of an Alabama linebacker. But I think in the third round, a player that year, a year ago was, was targeted as, as the top linebacker, first round pick. I think this could be a steal in the third round. Add to your linebacker room. You don't necessarily have to get him on the field right away, but gives you some talent and depth at a position that I think could use a little bit more. I like that. I think you're going to be surprised. So in my Newsom Rondale Moore scenario, I went edge rusher with that first third round pick. Joseph Osai out of Texas, a rocket off the edge who can rush the quarterback. He's Got, and in some ways, you know, he's been compared to Tack McKinley, um, a very competitive player, can set the edge against the run. You know, some people say maybe he's more of a three, four stand up guy. I think we could get him in as a sub package pass rusher early and he doesn't need to be on the field, you know, right away. So an interesting guy there. In the scenario where I took Tryon in the second round, I gave us Diami Brown. And now, will Diami Brown be there at that late in the third round? Probably not. So I'm thinking maybe a move up, take one of those fourth round picks, move up in the third, and get Diami Brown. But interestingly enough, you know, we've both got corner edge receiver in our first three picks. And now I'm going to blow your socks off. I'm taking a linebacker at pick number 91 as well. Because I thought about Sean Wade here. And if we get an outside corner early, I could see Sean Wade being the pick at number 91. I've also seen Sean Wade going like the 150s in some of these mock drafts where there's a lot of concern about what happened last year. But if I got an outside corner, I'd definitely consider Wade here in the third as a slot for the future because he was very good there two years ago for Ohio State. But I took a linebacker, Chaz Surratt, out of North Carolina. He was a college quarterback who converted to linebacker, two-time first-team All-ACC, great in coverage, just a natural understanding of route concepts and zones because he was a quarterback, and he's a project. So he's not somebody you have to force on the field, but he's a tackling machine. He could come in and play special teams and create some real competition competition there ultimately develop into a long-term running buddy for Jacob Phillips and Taki and Mac perhaps down the road but he also was a great blitzer and I think it was his understanding as a quarterback that allowed him to really understand protections and exploit them six sacks six sacks last year seven and a half tackles for loss not to mention four pass breakups and an interception so I do think that's a sweet spot Andrew Barry's never been in an organization that's used a pick before the third round on a linebacker I don't think that changes but I think that's a nice spot there to get somebody with some real upside that you can ease into this and if you came out with you know Newsom Moore Osai Surratt or on the other side Newsom Tryon Diami Brown and so I think you're feeling really really good about this draft and yours as same was basically the same concept just different names yeah, I think we'll learn a lot about Andrew Berry and, and the Browns just direction long term with this draft, because a lot of these picks are your long term answers at, at some positions, because I think, like you said, the roster right now, it's good to go for, for the 2021 season. 
I, I just think, yeah, we'll learn a lot philosophically, the, 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 hot, the heated debate about linebackers, defensive tackles, how you value uh, these positions. I, I even dabbled with going double corner round one and round two. I mean, that's, that's where I, I that, and it wouldn't surprise me. I, I think that that's a position you could really hit hard uh, after a free agent period, free agency period where, you know, the numbers add up, you lost more than you gained at, at that position compared to last year. So it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if you go double corner uh, and it wouldn't surprise me again. I think the only, I, 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 I would be le- more surprised now than I was last week if you win edge rusher at, at 26, but not ruling it out because that could be another position where you're loading up for the future. Yeah, I think it's all on the table. And that means that Andrew Barry did a good job kind of establishing this roster headed into this draft to give him that flexibility. And you're right, you could see easily. It's why I mentioned Sean Wade as an inside guy to pair with an outside guy earlier in the second round. Let's say you get Newsom, you could go with Santi Samuel Jr. in the second round. You could go Elijah Molden in the second round, a slot corner out of the Washington. I think it's all on the table. And that's what's exciting uh, that, you know, it's great. We've been on this road, it feels like, forever this year the road to the draft we don't pick till 26 which is a wonderful thing but i think we are going to learn a lot and you're going to add some talent and some some real competition and now all that's left to do is to see what actually happens the time for speculation is over it's the time for action grips yeah can't wait i mean that this is a this is a weird new place to be in trying to project the draft that we don't pick until number 26 but i could get used to it So could I. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us on our Road to the Draft series presented by P&G and Meyer. For Andrew Gribble, I'm Nathan Zagura saying thank you so much. And don't forget to keep it tuned to cleanbrowns.com and the Browns mobile app. Not to mention our complete draft week of Browns lives for your viewing pleasure. We got you covered here for the 2021 NFL Draft. 